In this short uh, physics practice question, we have a ball with a given velocity vector, which is moving towards a wall, and in some moment it will hit the wall and then bounce away from the wall. And uh, the question is, what is the condition for the ball to hit this wall, and uh, also um, what is the final velocity after the ball impacts the wall. We have everything done, so we have a velocity vector here, and we have also a vector here showing um, the inclination of this, of this wall. This uh, vector is perpendicular to the wall, in this uh, exercise, this vector is not actually what you know as the normal vector, simply because it's uh, not normalized. But uh, before we go on, go ahead with this uh, exercise, I would like to discuss a little bit about dot product and how you can use um, this dot product in exercises like this. So, let's start with the definition. Um, if we have two vectors, for example, u, u and v, then the dot product u dot v is equal to the length of vector u. Please note that uh, these uh, vertical lines um, mark the length of the vector, so it's the length of the vector u times the length of the vector v times the cosine of the angle between the two, the two vectors. Um, the reason why I'm introducing the dot product is uh, because I will be interested in calculating the length of projection, or projected vector, which I will show here. Okay, so this is the vector u projected onto the direction determined by the vector v. Uh, of course, this projection is created in such a way that here is the is a right angle, and the question is what's the length of the vector u prime shown shown in here? From a trigonometry, we have a right triangle here. Um, the cosine of the of alpha angle here is simply this. Uh, sorry, this the adjacent side. So it's u prime divided by u divided by u. Actually, I have to apply here the vertical lines vertical lines to mark that what I am talking about, these are, these are uh, the lengths of these vectors, not just the vectors. Actually, I don't know, I have no idea how could I uh, divide one vector by another vector. Simply, there is no such operation. Uh, but I know perfectly well uh, how to divide the length of one vector by the length of the other vector, because the lengths are simply numbers. From this formula, I can easily follow on and find that the length of u prime, the one that I am looking for, is the length of u times cosine alpha. This is how I can find the value of u prime. If you now look at what I have here and what I actually have here, this is the same thing, the length of u times cosine alpha. So actually I can write an equation that the length of u prime is equal this thing u dot v okay so this is this and this divided by the length of v and this is one of the most fundamental fundamental uh, formulas for using the dot product. Now, let's imagine that we have a special vector which is uh, in the same direction as the vector v, but it's uh, 
normalized. What is uh, what does it mean that the vector is normalized? This means that uh, the length of this vector, I will call it n for normalized, the length of this vector is 1. And I will draw this as a very small vector right here. Okay, In geometry, mathematics, but first of all in computer graphics, normal vectors like this determine the directions. So this is a vector which determines the direction on which the vector u is actually projected. If instead of uh, the vector v, I would use the vector n to do the same calculation, okay, I would get that u prime, the length of u prime, is equal, well, the dot product of u dot n this time, u dot n, divided by the length of n, using the very, very similar uh, maths as, as previously. But um, what's interesting this time, as you can see, the length of n, by definition, is 1. So actually I can say that the length of my u vector okay, is simply u dot, sorry, not v, u dot n, okay, u dot n. Um, I can write something like this, I will, this is a very important formula, so I will copy it once again. The length of u prime is equal u dot n, okay. u prime is the vector, that is a fact of projecting of the vector u, this is u, the, the vector u on the direction determined by the vector n, which is here, okay, with this small red vector. I will go one step forward and I will tell that I can also find the coordinates of the vector u prime, the co coordinates of the vector that I am looking for, just by specifying that this is nothing else but the length of this vector, which can be found from the dot product of u and v, multiplied by n. n is the normal vector, it will provide our u prime vector with the uh, direction, but we actually don't know, um, uh, we, we actually have no length here, the length is 1, so um, this multiplication will not change the length of my vector u prime. And this is exactly how you can calculate the projection of a vector using the normal, normalized vector, normalized direction vector. Why to make such a fuss about dot product? Okay, you could say, now what's wrong with uh, this formula here? Uh, the problem is that this formula contains alpha. We are quite often in a situation in which we are not very much sure what the alpha angle is. And it also contains the trigonometrical calculation of the cosine function. Opposite to this, in this formula, we have the dot product and the multiplication. Um, let me uh, show you now the quick way of calculating the dot product. Let's take any two vectors, like 2, 3, and uh, minus 5, 4. What is the dot product of these vectors? You don't have actually to apply this definition formula, because there is some way of calculating the dot product which is very effective, very fast, very quick and very easy. You just take x's and multiply them together and then you take y's and multiply to multiply them together and add both results to, to each other. So the dot product of these two vectors is exactly 2 times minus 5, okay? plus 3, I will use this kind of multiplication mark here, plus 3 times 4, which is basically minus 10, 
plus 12 so it is 2 so what we can say uh, dot product is very powerful because you can calculate the projections of the vector on a given direction in a very very simple mathematically simple way using just multiplication and addition no trigonometrical functions now let's get back to the to our exercise about the ball bouncing off from the wall we are now looking again at our short exercise with the ball bouncing out uh, from the wall this is a wall um, we have the velocity vector of the ball. We are looking for the final velocity of the ball after the impact. And we also have a vector which is a perpendicular to the wall. That's this vector. And one thing that we can immediately spot here, it's not the normal vector. It's not normalized. So the first thing that we should uh, really do with this, uh, with this, uh, with this data here, is to normalize this vector. Normalization of the vector is done first of all by calculating the length of the vector t. This length is square root of the sum of the squares of both uh, both uh, coordinates. Minus one square is one, plus two square is four. So this is simply square root of 5. This means that the normalized vector, normalized vector t, is, you have simply to take h of these coordinates here and divide it by, um, by the length of this vector. So it's uh, minus 1 divided by square root of 5 and the second coordinate is 2 divided by square root of 5. It's a bit difficult to have numbers with um, a square of root um, a square root in the, the uh, nomina denominator, so we will multiply uh, both parts of this fraction by uh, square root of five. So square root of five times minus one is minus square root of five divided by square root of five times square root of five is five. So it's minus root of five over 5 and here is simply 2 roots of 5 over 5 and that's this makes our normal vector okay I am I have to move this piece of paper a little bit so that to, to show it to you um, that's it now how to solve the problem itself we have a ball this ball is going towards the wall and in some moment it's bouncing off and going away with some uh, new velocity. Um, first thing that you that, that we have to spot, that we have to notice, is that uh, this ball will only hit the wall if it goes towards this wall. What it means, uh, it goes towards uh, this wall, this means that the angle between this vector and this vector, if we would draw them together, it would be, this is the t vector, t vector or n vector, and the normal vector will have the same direction. And v vector, this angle here, alpha, alpha must be greater, must be greater than 90 degrees. This is, um, easily easily tested by the condition that the cosine alpha must be less than zero but if cosine alpha is less than zero then also v dot t is less than zero or v dot n is less than zero and this is the first part any of these okay they, they, they will be less than zero um, it's actually one and the second, these are equivalent uh, um, equations. Uh, this is the answer for our question number one. What is the condition for the ball to hit this wall? So this condition is that the dot product of either v and t, v and t, or v and normalized vector, I will draw the normalized vector is somewhere here, okay? Uh, this dot product must be less than zero.
Okay, but now find the velocity of the ball after after impact. Okay, find the velocity of the ball after the impact, assuming that this is an ideal elastic collision. I drawn uh, here what we suspect might be the final velocity of this vector, but first I will extend this line here on the other on the other side. And, you know, these are vectors, so I can draw them anywhere I want. I just have to keep the same length and the same direction, so I can actually draw my v-vector here. Physics says that the final velocity, which I will draw here and I will call r, but this final velocity is actually the reflection, reflection of the velocity vector. Wow, either over this axis here, so you could imagine that we also have v here, okay? So this is just a reflection. This means that if we have some angle here, let's call it theta, the same angle we have here, and let's call it theta. But also, this is reflected from this vector. So this vector and this vector are identical, but in two direct, um, different, different directions. I will also draw the n, the normal vector. Normal vector is here. So actually what you can now spot very easily is that the final velocity, r, is a reflection, the reflection of the velocity over the normal. Okay, so this is reflection over the normal. To find the value of r, I can redraw the normal vector right here. This is the normal vector. And... Um, I will look for a very special vector, which is exactly here, and in this direction. I will call it x. So this is the vector x. The vector x is... Uh, uh, sorry, I will also draw one more vector, which is the same vector as v, but pointing in exactly opposite direction. So this is minus v. Okay, now looking at this picture, you can easily discover that my vector x, which is here, is nothing else but projection, the projection of vector minus v onto the direction shown or determined by vector v. So, very easily, you can find that x using using the maths that I showed you in the previous part. Okay, we will use the dot product operation dot product of this minus v, not v, minus v, minus v, dot n, dot n, okay? So this is the length of my vector x, and now multiplying this by the n vector, I get exactly the vector x. And we are nearly here with the final solution for the formula for the r vector. Because if you look once again at, the, at this picture, r, the vector r, the vector of reflection, equals v, this vector, okay, not, not, not minus v, now it's v, plus x, plus, once again, x. Because I can draw this x here, uh, as if this is the reflection, so... The length and direction of this x here and this x here is exactly the same. So, uh, using using vector algebra, I can just take from here, starting from here, vector v plus x plus x, and what I have is r. So, this is v plus x plus x. So, this is, in other words, v plus 2x. But we already know what x is, so I will... I will now find that r is equal to v plus two x's. These are x's, and th this is the x, so it's minus two bracket v dot n multiplied by n. This is the very important formula for the reflection vector, 
the formula that we are normally using in solving problems like this. Okay, so if you have a ball bouncing from the wall, its final velocity, the velocity after the impact, is given by this formula. During the in-class test, uh, you can simply assume that you have this formula, so um, actually you don't have to show, to demonstrate how to get this formula. This is ready for you to use uh, during the in-class test. So I have uh, copied our formula and our input data, the velocity vector and the normal vector. And uh, we'll just demonstrate now how to make this calculation. What is uh, important to notice here is that this dot here symbolizes the dot product, dot product calculation. N is a vector, so after calculating the dot product, which is actually a number, so please remember the dot product result is a number, we have a number multiplied by an another number too, and this number we will multiply by a vector. And finally, we will do the another vector operation, vector subtraction. V is also a vector. So, this equals... Okay. I will rewrite V minus 2. Uh, we have now to calculate the dot product of these two vectors. So, I will create a big bracket now. 2 minus 2 dot minus root of 5 over 5 2 roots of 5 over 5 Oops. all the brackets are correct now uh, multiplied by n so this equals 2 v minus 2 times x coordinates uh, multiplied together, so this is 2 times this thing here, so I have minus 2 square root of 5 over 5. That's uh, one part of this, uh, of this uh, equation, and the other is this thing times this thing, okay? Uh, they should be added, but we have minus 2 here, so this will be a negative number, so I can say it's minus 2 times 2 is 4 square root of 5 over 5 times n. Um, minus 2 square root of, root of 5 over 5 minus 4 square root of 5 over 5. It's not very complex. It's simply I have a common denominator of 5 here, minus 2 roots of 5, minus 4 roots of 5 is minus 6 root of 5 times n. This equals, I will start with this multiplication because I have two numbers here. Okay, 2 times um, minus 6 is, uh, first of all, v minus, uh, minus uh, 12 so I will move this minus here and say it's now plus, okay? So it's plus 12 square of 5 divided by 5 times n. Time to uh, do this vector multiplication here. So this equals to v plus... n n is something like this, minus square root of 5 over 5, 2 square root of 5 over 5. Multiplication of a vector by a number is multiplication of its x coordinate by this number and its y coordinate by this number. So this is actually times 12 square root of 5 divided by 5 and the same thing here. 12 square root of 5 divided by 5. So what is that now? Oh, sorry. Moving this paper along. So I, what I actually did is I have used the x and y coordinate of my n, n uh, vector 
and multiplied both of them by that number, which is um, actually a scale for this n vector. And now I will just have to do all these multiplications here. So it's again v plus 12, 12, square root of 5 times square root of 5, it's 5. Divided by 5 times 5, it's 25. And of course I have a minus sign here, so it's minus 12 times 5 divided by 25. And actually this will reduce to 1, this will reduce to 5, um, so it's uh, minus 12 divided by 5, I will uh, write it so in a moment. Now let's get, uh, let's go ahead to this multiplication, 2 times 12, it's 24, square root of 5 times square root of 5 is 5 divided by 5 times 5, it's 25. And again, this will reduce to 1, this will reduce to 5. So my result so far is v plus minus 12 divided by 5, okay, and 24 divided by 5, 24 over 5. I will now uh, convert it, it's easy, not convert it to decimal point uh, uh, fractions, so it's uh, v plus minus 12 divided by 5, it's uh, minus 2, 2 divided by 5, 2 over 5, it's dot, uh, point, sorry, point 4, okay, so it's minus 2.4, and the y coordinate is 24 divided by 5, it's 4.4 uh, 4 over 5, it's point 0.8. Nearly finished. Uh, v is, uh, let me look here, V is uh, 2 minus 2, so it's uh, 2 minus 2 plus minus 2.4, 4.8. So 2 plus minus 2.4, it's 0 0.4 and here minus 2 plus 4.8 it's 2.8 and oops, I would nearly go wrong 2 minus 2.4 is of course minus 0 0.4 so this is the result of our short exercise of the velocity of the ball after hitting a stationary obstacle you were watching a physics practice series too about collisions with stationary objects. Thank you.